Iraq joining us, of course, is, of course, is head coach Tom Sainfield. Coach, it is your first game to coach with the Philippines at home, a tough result. What do you have to say about this? Yeah, even my biggest uh, defeat ever in my life as a coach. As a youth player, I lost sometimes big, but uh, as a coach, I uh, don't have much experience in losing these numbers. So um, I'm um, very disappointed, but I'm also very sorry. I would like to start to say my apologies to uh, uh, the ten thousands of fans who were in the stadium, but also the people who are watching at home. Uh, my apologies for the big defeat and also my uh, thanks for the big support from the fan side. The fans were behind us for the whole 90 minutes and I really would like to thank them and once more sorry for um, the very disappointing result. Um, I um, want to talk about positives because uh, the negatives I will talk inside doors uh, with the people who are responsible for that. Uh, staff and players, we will discuss what went wrong. But I saw also a lot of positives. I think we um, tried to play more football than uh, in Iraq. We, we had more ball possession, we created chances. First half, uh, Santi Rublico had uh, two good actions with shots. Uh, second half, we had several good actions. I saw a lot of young players. Santi is one of them, but also later Pocholo and uh, Mark Schweinston uh, coming very good in. I think this uh, is very good that our homegrown players or local based players play in the local league, um, like uh, Schweinston and Gaioso, who played also in my eyes. Again, a very good game. And then there are positives for me. And I saw some weaknesses. I saw some um, things we have to improve. And that's also positive because I can learn from it. Um, well, we will discuss that inside. I think we lost today uh, with that kind of number because of individual mistakes. Every time we made a mistake, almost every time they uh, killed us and they scored the chances they got and scored goals. Uh, compared to the last game where we made less mistakes um, and, and could keep long to zero, now probably we, we were less focused and, and making real mistakes. But I saw a lot of positives, mostly in midfield and offensive. And um, I can tell you we're still in the running, how, how strange it may be. Uh, if Vietnam win today against Indonesia, Indonesia have seven points. Um, we can get seven points. And if we would get seven points, it would mean that we beat Indonesia away. And for my knowledge, the head-to-head counts in advance of the goal difference. So if we beat Indonesia and they drew here, that means that we would be ahead of Indonesia. If then Iraq would beat Vietnam and Indonesia, and we win Vietnam and Indonesia, we can be still second. Uh, so as long as we have hope, as long as we are alive, we are not dead. Um, for me, it was an interesting week. I'm very satisfied with Federation organization. We had a great camp. Organization was top, top class hotels, good flights, it was intense. Uh, the staff worked hard, I'm very satisfied with the players. Only today, at some moments, some uh, situations, uh, we were not up to level to this opponent. And that's something to learn of. You get an uppercut, uh, we lost the battle, but um, we are still in the war. And uh, now we have to win two battles uh, to, to win this war. Thank you, Coach. The floor is open for any questions. Kindly state your name and your organization. CBN, very sorry for that loss and understand your disappointment. Um, unfamiliar territory for you, as you say, very, you know, you haven't experienced this. I know it's just been a couple of minutes after the match, but how do you move forward from here? And as you said, we still have a chance. So what would be the next steps for the Philippine men's national team? Yeah, we were um, already before this game, the weeks and months before, we were already planning ahead. We, we had short-term plan this game, uh, but we were also planning ahead. I had no chance to, to see much Philippine players the last months. 
I saw some university football, some high school football, uh, but 6, 7 April the league will start and I will be there. I will watch uh, local players. If you see today Mark Swinston and, and uh, Kai also playing, it shows that there's quality in the local league and we had uh, Theo Libarnas in the team and I'm a little bit sorry that he didn't make his debut today because he was close to make it. Uh, he did a fantastic camp and he's a schoolboy so uh, we can develop on, on that part. On the other side we had also contact the last month with a lot of foreign based and foreign born players who play on very high level. They, people who play in the second or the highest level in the United States people who play in Norway in top level or second level in Sweden and in Belgium. Um, so uh, and we have already the confirmation of six of these players that they are ready to play in June for us. Um, the passports are issued so within uh, two months I expect that I have several options more. The guys who I mentioned now who are uh, born and playing abroad but also the guys within the league who have an opportunity to show, who didn't get the opportunity before to show their quality. I saw uh, the guys from Kaya and I saw uh, Manila Drillers and uh, Diggers and I saw, saw some games in the preseason. I saw Tagik, uh, but I didn't see all the games and I would like to see all teams playing uh, because every Filipino player has the opportunity to play. We will analyze uh, the performance on training and on the both matches of the players who were now in camp and then we will make the right decision uh, which ones will be on board for the future is, uh, is, is, is connected to the performance but also to the age because we are building a team for the future that's also the reason we really focus on bringing young players and, and building a young team um, and, and, and then we will see which alternatives we have if they are better and if we can build something and uh, before the June matches we plan a training camp in May uh, for uh, for 10 days uh, to have more time, maybe with uh, not yet confirmed, but it could be Dubai uh, with possible friendly game in, in advance to give some more opportunities to develop this team because uh, we um, we got the uppercut, we are very down. I'm I'm frustrated. I can tell you that, uh, but it doesn't bring anything to stay in your frustration. You have to use uh, the weaknesses and the strength. To, to, be, to grow, to grow as a team, as a person, as everyone. And um, in, in, in June, we have to be ready for the next two battles. And uh, hopefully, uh, we will uh, be strong enough to face these opponents who, in my eyes, are uh, more our level compared to, uh, to Iraq. Ryan Phoenix. Maybe pass the mic, please. PMA News Online. Um, we noticed after the game you went with the players around the, the stadium and uh, in particular took quite some time with the Ultras Filipinas. Would you like to share what was uh, the interaction between you and uh, the Ultras Filipinas? Yeah, first of all, uh, I think it's uh, our, our, our duty uh, that we respect our fans. Uh, these fans make effort to come in the Holy Week uh, to the stadium on the working day in the evening uh, to find difficult parking places, to spend money for a ticket, uh, to celebrate, to buy shirts or scarves, and to celebrate the team. And uh, sure, uh, we disappointed them with the result. I think some of the fans are satisfied about the performance of some players and, and the fighting spirit as a team but the result no one can be satisfied of. And I think, first of all, we had to respect all the fans in the stadium. That's the reason we went to greet them and, and, and clap for them. They clapped and, and, and cheered for us, so we needed to clap after the game for them. Even if you lose, you have to be grown-up man and, and fear of go uh, and, and, and have no that fear for, for, for yeah what you could face. And um, the Ultras, um, they are fantastic. They were here on the open training. Uh, in a small group, I, to be honest, uh, um, before I came here, I checked some videos and I saw the Ultras already in, in, in November. And I really love uh, the atmosphere they create in the stadium. It's a real football atmosphere. Um, many countries don't have it. I know in Southeast Asia, some nations have it, and, and even in bigger size. But I'm very happy and very satisfied with their support. And we, first of all, we apologized for our performance. They made it also clear that they made the effort to support us and they are still supporting us and I think then uh, sharing that moment together, also clapping for each other and doing the ritual, um, uh, doesn't matter if you win or lose, 
you stick, uh, you stick together and uh, that we did. And I would like to thank the Ultras, but all the other 10,000 fans in the stadium for their support today. Quick follow-up, there is a quick picture of Graham. Is he coming for the June uh, with, uh, oh, yeah. window? Um, you talk about Rafael Obermeyer. Rafael Obermeyer. Yeah, um, the ball is with Rafael. Um, we spoke with a lot of uh, players. Um, we spoke, we, I, I can mention you the names. We spoke with Anthony and Nick Markinich, uh, with uh, Joseph Bakai. We spoke with uh, Zico Bailey. Uh, we spoke with uh, uh, Alex Moniz. Uh, we spoke with uh, Dylan the Monk. Um, naturally, uh, Gerrit Holtman, but he didn't react at all at the, on the end. Uh, John Patrick Strauss with uh, uh, Kemter, but he's still injured. We spoke with uh, Johannes Selvin from Odense. Uh, we spoke with Björn Martin Christensen, and about 90% uh, of these people, uh, and uh, Adrian Ugelvik, we spoke with. 90% of the, mention, the players I mentioned uh, are, in theory, in if the passports are ready uh, for, the, for the June matches. Thank you. Greg Sokolsky, SI North America, covering Pacific Rim Soccer also our future home of the World Cup, the Philippines. It seems every time we come on a press conference, new staff, new coach, new players, who's who's. So what is the long-term plan for men's soccer in the Philippines? And more so, continuity. It seems every great program around the world has continuity. No. But continuity seems to be non-existent. So what is the plan, the vision? How do they plan to get to the next level, lacking the continuity that they've had in the past? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for your question, and, and thanks for visiting us. Um, yeah, I understand your question, and naturally I can't talk about what happened in the past. I uh, was not part of it, but um, when I got contacted uh, in November, beginning December, uh, by the new board, um, I was impressed about their dynamics and about their long-term vision, and uh, I can tell you, I would not have resigned my contract, uh, what ran till August 2026 with Gambia, to come here for two months or for three months. So I agreed a long-term commitment uh, with Philippines because I believe in the potential of the federation, in the goals they have, and in the quality this new board has. Uh, they are really ambitious and they have really uh, a lot of things uh, where we can achieve our goals with, but naturally. Um, first of all, I have to say I'm very satisfied also with the staff we created around me. I have a fantastic local and uh, foreign uh, quality uh, staff around me who do a great job and who, uh, what makes it very easy for me to work in a professional way. Um, but the most important is naturally what happens on the pitch. The elf, uh, 11 or these um, uh, 23 soldiers who will battle the, 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 the fights for us. And I'm very positive. I mean, I saw today a lot of positives. I saw young players who make their debut or young players who were in the last month sometimes killed uh, by, by other people. Um, I saw local base players. I saw players committed fighting for the team. I saw also skills and qualities and I know uh, that we, we were not in full strength now. I know that this was only the first camp we had together, so we had to fix the things in a very short period of time without any preparation in friendlies. So I think it can only go upwards. The game again in Basra was very positive. I think we all had huge hopes that today we could make that step. Um, let's say that uh, we were knocking and knocking and knocking and we got a small push in Basra. Uh, today we got uh, a knockout, uh, but boxing is more than one fight. We will stand up, we will analyze, and we will be ready to uh, give knockouts to opponents in the near future. I have one quick question. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ivan Salena from Double Packing Spot, but at the moment, Indonesia is leading at Vietnam, so will the, will the approach change to the next two match, or are you still keeping that same optimism that you will overtake Indonesia for the second spot? Yeah, from, from my knowledge, but tell me if I'm wrong. Indonesia will have seven points. Yes. Okay. If we win both games, we have seven points. Yeah. Imagine Indonesia lose from Iraq. I hope that Iraq will keep doing their duty and try to beat Indonesia and Vietnam. That will mean that Indonesia and we have both seven points. 
The goal difference is for me, in my knowledge, not the deciding factor. For me, it's the head-to-head. -head. Indonesia play here a draw. If we get seven points, it would mean we would beat Indonesia. So head-to-head, -head, we would be with the same points as Indonesia ahead of Indonesia because we have to win to get seven points. So if I'm wrong, tell me. But if it's the head-to-head -head what counts, then any victory against Indonesia and Vietnam, if they both lose against Iraq, would bring us on the second spot. Correct? Yeah, thanks. Oh. Um, coach, uh, Errol Kabatbat, a big game against Iraq, and yet you opted for the young players to play. Uh, can you just uh, enlighten me on the reasons behind this? Which young players you meant? Uh, they also, uh, uh, Rublico and the other. Okay. Yeah, also is 27. I don't know what is young in your philosophy because I feel very young today. Uh, <laughs> if 27 is young, I'm also young. Um, 27 is uh, is it, it, I, very strange. I read the last month your comments and, and everything from journalists. And if 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 there are players of uh, foreign origin 28 some people say they are too old we have to say goodbye to them and if they are 27 uh, then sometimes they are too young Kayoso is not young Kayoso is a quality player and he did a fantastic job today just like he did in uh, in Basra uh, Santi he is young but he already played his eighth national team match uh, for the country so he's not young he's not a risk player and I think Santi was one of the best players on the pitch First half, two, two very good actions with a good shot. Second half, also very good. And then later, Mark Swinston, who came in, who is, I don't think that very young, but it was his debut, Pochol. So in, in, in age, I don't think we were that young today. Uh, in experience, it was also OK. And if we are very honest, it were not the, these players uh, who let us down. I think uh, they did very well, and, and it gives me a big sign that we can build further on them. And uh, I'm very satisfied with the two players you mentioned, with Santi and with Caioso. I think they did a real good job, together with them, several others. Um, but I think really we, we have to support them. It doesn't matter where you play. If you are a high-paid professional in the European League, or you play in the local league, or even you have no team, the moment when you come on the pitch and you do your duty, uh, I think we have to, to celebrate and support that. We have not always control over the result, uh, but um, I'm satisfied about these young players. That does it for this post-match press conference. Coach Tom, thank you very much for your time. Thank you guys, thank you and girls, thank you for coming.